Hello, this is Darcy, the dog trainer, founder and head trainer of Communi K9 Training and Behavioral Counseling, where it's my passion and purpose to connect dogs and people. Now, I wasn't actually going to film this video this soon in the season, but I'm noticing some Christmas trees up in my clients' homes already, and I thought I'd best get on it. There's a few simple things you can do with your dogs to make sure you get through the Christmas season safely. And unfortunately, every year there's always some issues that happen um, that are, for the most part, avoidable, that if you just took a few precautions, you wouldn't have to face. So I want to give you a few simple tips today to get through the Christmas season safely and happily with your dogs so that there's no trips to the vet needed. So first thing, chocolate and coffee. So chocolate is, especially really dark chocolate, is toxic to dogs or can be very toxic to dogs. And chocolate, of course, is a very popular Christmas gift. So when somebody's giving you a gift at Christmas, you might just want to check with them and say, hey, is this edible? They don't have to give the gift away, but just ask them if it's edible, just to be sure it's safe to put under your tree. Because you definitely don't want to be leaving anything edible under your tree. If your dog does ingest chocolate, make sure to call your vet, let them know, and ask them if there's anything you need to do to take care of it, just to be on the safe side. So second thing, plant, there's some toxic Christmas plants for dogs. Now poinsettias are, are not highly toxic, but they are mildly toxic to dogs and can cause some gastrointestinal upsets. So just be mindful where you place those. Uh, mistletoe and holly, including the, the leaves and the berries, can also be quite toxic and a lot more so than poinsettias and can cause a lot of abdominal upset, um, the drooling and, and a few other symptoms. So make sure that if you do have any of those around that they're not in your dog's reach. The third thing is breakable ornaments and tinsel. So when you're decorating your Christmas tree, keep those things off of the lower branches, particularly if you've got young puppies or adolescent dogs, and this is their first or even second Christmas, because puppies and young dogs are super curious and anything dangling from the tree and making any, doing any kind of movements is gonna just draw them in. Um, and especially even if you have cats, please be very, very mindful of this. And when I talk about tinsel, I'm talking about those long silver pieces of thread-like things that you hang off your trees. Um, not necessarily the long garland, tinsel garland ones, but just the ones that are loose pieces. So those are, they're quite long and they can get caught up in your dog's intestinal tract if they do eat them. And in some cases require surgery to be removed. So keep that off your tree. Basically, if you have a dog, just don't put it on your tree or a cat. And any breakable ornaments or anything that you don't want to get chewed, keep it on the higher branches. Now that brings me to my next point, which is use a baby gate. So if you do have a young puppy or new dog in the household, and this is their first Christmas, or you have a dog who's particularly high energy or has a tail like a whip, you know, if you have a, a pit bull or a Dalmatian or a Great Dane, like they have, or a Labrador, they have really whip-like tails. And all they have to do is brush by that tree, wagging their tail, and all the ornaments come flying off. So think about putting up, an, if you have an X-Pen um, or any kind of a baby barricade, put it up around the tree. And that way you minimize the risk of anything being damaged on the tree and anything under the tree getting chewed up as well. Now, if you have a dog who is uncomfortable being around strangers or in large groups, and you're planning on having family over for Christmas or friends over and having a Christmas party, think about what you're gonna do with your dog. Have a game plan, because simply letting your dog uh, roam loose in the house isn't necessarily gonna be a good idea in that case. So you may wanna talk to a friend and send your dog off to a friend's house for the night, or maybe get them into a boarding kennel if you can. But be forewarned, most boarding kennels are booked up well in advance of Christmas. So if this is something that you need to plan for, do it today. Don't wait until the day of the party. If you don't have somewhere you can send your dog, make sure you give them a really good run before everybody comes over. Like take them out for a good hour, hour and a half. And then pop them in a bedroom or in a back room in the house where they're away from everybody. They're in a quiet room, turn a TV on for them. 
So you can give them stuffed Kongs, you can give them raw bones to chew on or bully sticks. So give them something to keep themselves occupied. And then if you have multiple people in the house, you can take shifts, going to check on them, taking them out for a pee, or you can even bring them out super, with supervi supervision um, and let them say hello to a couple people on leash even if you want to play it safe before taking them back into the bedroom. So you bring them out for maybe 10, 15 minutes or five even if that's all they can handle and then put them back into their safe, quiet space again and let them relax for the rest of the evening. And finally, if you are having guests over and your dog loves being around people, feel free to let them run, run loose with them. But just be mindful that your guests are more than likely going to be feeding your dog things that you don't know about. So if you have a dog with a sensitive digestive tract who gets an upset stomach easily or who will never tell somebody that they're full and will keep eating until they explode, be mindful that you might need to give your dog a little bit of supervision or you may need to let the guests know not to feed the dog no matter how cute and starving he looks. Otherwise, there might be some issues later on in the evening or the next day when that starts to pass through the system. And we don't want any sick dogs at Christmas. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful, safe and happy holiday season and Christmas with your dogs. And I look forward to seeing you next week.